did the secret rapture doctrine originate? The secret pre-tribulation doctrine is not found in the Bible. So where and when did it originate? You may be surprised to learn that it wasn't until the early or mid-1800s that there was any significant group of believers around the world that looked for a rapture of the church prior to a seven-year tribulation period. The secret rapture teaching was not taught by the early church. It was not taught by the church of the first centuries. It was not taught by the reformers. It was not taught by anyone except a couple of Roman Catholic theologians until about the year 1830. Its origins. The Roman Catholic Church had to come up with a view of prophecy to counter the historic view of prophecy that the reformers had used to identify the Church of Rome. The little horn of Daniel, chapter 7, the mouth of Revelation in chapter 13, and the harlot of Revelation in chapter 17. This new scheme of prophetic interpretation became known as Futurism. It was a Roman Catholic Jesuit priest named Ribera who, in the days of the Reformation, first taught that all the events in the book of Revelation were to take place literally during the three and a half years reign of the Antichrist. Later, Emmanuel Lacunza, also a Jesuit priest, built on Ribera's teachings. He spent much of his life writing a book titled The Coming of Messiah in Glory and Majesty. Lacunza, however, wrote under the pen name of Rabbi Ben Ezra, supposedly a learned Jew who had accepted Christ as his Savior. He did this so that the unsuspecting Protestants would accept his book for the Protestant world then wanted nothing from a Jesuit. His book was published in 1812. Now enter the name of Edward Irving. Born in Scotland in 1792, Irving discovered Lacunza's book and fell in love with it, translated it into English, and it was published in London in 1827. Then Irving began to hold Bible conferences throughout Scotland, emphasizing the coming of Jesus to rapture his church. Later, J.N. Darby was introduced to the secret rapture doctrine by the Irvinites. The Irvinites were the followers of Edward Irvin. They also introduced to him the famous book by Rabbi Ben Ezra, which is, if you recall, the pen name for the Jesuit priest Emmanuel Lacunza. Darby was himself a prolific writer, and from that time a constant stream of propaganda came from his pen. His writings on biblical subjects number over 30 volumes of 600 pages each. Darby developed and organized futurism into a system of prophetic teachings called dispensationalism. The secret rapture teaching was introduced into the United States and Canada between the 1840s and 1870s. A Congregationalist preacher by the name of C.I. Schofield came under the influence of Darby and the Plymouth Brethren. Schofield became a strong promoter of the teaching that had been promulgated by Darby, whom he considered quote, the most profound Bible student of modern times, unquote. Schofield incorporated this teaching into his Schofield Reference Bible. Three million copies were published in the first 50 years. Through this Bible, Schofield shrewdly carried the teaching of the secret rapture into the very heart of evangelism. Many of your modern Baptist pastors rely heavily upon Schofield. There is one final link in the chain of development and spread of the rapture theory that should be mentioned in passing. Schofield and Darby influenced D.L. Moody. Moody was influential in the early Pentecostal movement. How, you may ask? 
The Assemblies of God are today by far the largest Pentecostal denomination in the world. In 1914, they ordered their Sunday school and study materials from the Moody Press. So the Assemblies of God believed what the Moody Bible Institute taught, which included the secret rapture. And so it is today. Great numbers of churches have discarded the historic teaching of the church concerning prophecy and have replaced it with a concept invented merely to deceive. Pre-tribulation rapture teachers tell us that the church from the time that Christ ascended to heaven believed that he could return at any moment to rapture his church. Many of these teachers believe that all prophetic signs ceased at his ascension and that they would not resume until he would return for his church. They teach this doctrine out of necessity, for if it is not true, then their pre-trib rapture theory would not be true. But we shall see that the doctrine of the imminent return of Christ is not biblical, and that the Bible actually teaches that Jesus Christ shall not come again for his church until the signs are fulfilled. In John chapter 21, Christ prophesied to Peter that he would die as an old man, and it was so. Peter died during the reign of Nero some 40 years later. Peter did not expect Christ to come in his lifetime and neither did the early church. The Lord prophesied to Paul that he had to preach in Rome. It was over three years before he would do so. According to 2 Timothy, the Apostle Paul knew he would die before the Lord would come back. We are also told in 2 Timothy that there will come a time of apostasy and fables before Christ would come. The scriptures tell us in 2 Thessalonians that Christ would not come until there was a great falling away from the faith. And we are told that Christ would not come to gather his people until after the man of sin was revealed. The early church knew that this could not take place until the Roman Empire fell and was divided into ten nations. This would not happen until the fifth century. Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 24 that the gospel had to first be published in all nations before he would come. This did not happen until the year 2000. The pre-trib teachers tell us that the church is not mentioned in the book of Revelation between chapters 4 and chapter 18. And thus they reason that the church must have been raptured up before this event takes place. Yet the book of Revelation is filled with references about the church. In Revelation chapter 13, we are told that the Antichrist beast shall make war with the saints. Saints are Christians. It's obvious that these are Christians because their names are in the Lamb's Book of Life. In chapter 7, we are told that these saints have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. In chapter 12, these saints are described as those who have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. In Revelation 20, they are described as partakers of the first resurrection. Clearly, these saints are the church of Jesus Christ, and they are in the first resurrection. 
the first resurrection happens during the rapture of the church. The pre-tribulation doctrine is a false doctrine. There is not a verse in all the Bible that states that Christ shall return before the great tribulation. But it says clearly in Matthew 24 that Jesus comes to gather his children after the tribulation. According to the scriptures, Christ is only coming back to earth one time. The voice of Christ shall call forth the dead Christians from the grave, and their bodies shall be reunited with their spirits. Jesus descends as he calls his church to meet him in the air. As this happens, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, that corruptible body shall be changed. It shall be transformed and made like the glorious body of our Lord Jesus Christ. We will close this study with some biblical instructions for the last days. We are not to fear death at the hands of our persecutors. We must entrust ourselves entirely to the Lord. We must make prayer and love toward our brethren our top priorities. We must persevere during times of tribulation. Here are some things to expect in these last days. Expect deception and let no man deceive you. Know that believers will be hated among all peoples because of the name of Jesus. Many who call themselves Christians will fall away when the persecution starts. Even friends and family will betray Christians to avoid persecution. Some believers, but not all, will be put to death. Pray for the strength to escape all things that are about to take place. Do not be concerned over material possessions. When you are arrested, do not be anxious about what you should say, because God has promised to give you the words that very hour. Do not worship the beast, nor take his mark. Despite what some teach, the Holy Spirit is not removed and will be there to assist you during the tribulation.